Hi everybody, let's keep going. This is video three in the series. Um, I have a program here, pretty simple here. We're moving back into the until command, so that's fine. Um, what happens is this. Let's say that I have a program here and I start a motor when I hit start. And it's going to wait and it's going to pause at line 21. It will not go any farther. The motor will just continue to run until something gets within 30 centimeters of the sonar. Okay. So let's say then you have that sonar ranger and then you put a piece of paper and you get within 30. Then what's going to happen as a result? It'll finally jump past line 21. It'll go to line 22, which tells it to turn off the motor. Okay, fine. Next, it'll go next to the line 23 and it'll pause and it'll wait. It'll wait for that object that was in front of the sonar to get getting greater than 30. So it's going to move back farther away from the sonar. And it's going to wait and wait and wait until that finally happens. And when that finally happens, then the motor is going to start going again. So let's say this. This is fine for one little loop. Okay, the motor will turn on, then it'll turn off, then it'll turn back on. But it's not going to continue going. What if I wanted this just to be the case forever? What if I wanted to have some kind of system set in place? Okay, so think of like, um, I don't know what kind of, think of a motor that's running and you have an object that's backing up, backing up, backing up until it gets too close to a wall and we want it to stop. Okay, but then we want it to move forward again or something like that. It's going to continue to back up so that the motor will turn on only whenever, um, only whenever we're not close to the wall, right? Some kind of safety feature. Okay. Um, what can we do then to make this happen over and over again? Well, this would be a great way to use a while loop, but we're going to do it in a different way. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to put in a condition that's always going to be true. Okay, for instance, we know that the number one will always equal the number one. That's a great way to set up an infinite while loop. So this thing is going to happen over and over and over and over again. I'm going to fix my formatting real quick, and you can see what happens is this. We start the task, it goes into the program. Then it's going to say, well, is 1 equal to 1? The answer to that's always going to be yes, by the way. So it'll never leave braces on 21 to 27. It will continue to come up here, check if 1 is equal to 1, go back. Check if 1 equals 1, go back. Okay. So I can take this line of code out. And we can look at it again as this. Ready? Every time it comes to the top, it's going to start the motor. It's going to wait for the, the object to get less than 30 centimeters from the sonar. It's going to stop it. It's going to wait till the sonar gets greater than 30. If it gets greater than 30, it jumps to 26, which tells it to go back up and check if 1 equals 1, which tells it to go into the loop again, which starts the motor. So in other words, this thing will run infinitely as long as you tell it. Okay. The only way that you're going to be able to get this program to stop is if you tell the program to stop on your own by Xing out of the program. Okay. So that's what's called an infinite loop. You want to have something that occurs over and over and over again. You want it to never stop. That's a great way to do it. Okay. So that's the that's it for this video. Quick one, three minutes. And the next one, I'll teach you then. What do I want it to do? What if I just want to be able to make decisions for like 30 seconds? What if I put in money into an arcade machine and it gives me one minute to make as many shots as I can, right? Like a pop a shot. Okay, how can we program something to make decisions but only for a given amount of time? That's the next video.